Kentucky in December at Winship Cancer Institute. Barry was meeting with Dr. Flowers every two weeks for six months, but during his therapy, a lot of people were shocked on what he did. On uh, November 26th, he started there, and he had his first chemotherapy on December the 10th. So from December the 10th to May 13th, he had six phases of, of chemotherapy. He um, went about every two weeks somewhere in there, you know, two, two uh, times in each phase, and it went over six, uh, six phases, so it was almost six months. Um, one of the interesting things, and, and Eric may be able to talk to you about this, is him, uh, between Eric and his physician, they decided not to do a traditional route of chemotherapy administration, which is used through a, what, what we refer to as a pick line or a port or a central line, so that the IV would be in his arm and then into a major um, vein in his heart. He opted to have IVs every time that he got the chemotherapy, and that was so that he could work out. Um, which is an interesting concept that most um, most patients don't have. So he went through this. He had his last chemo on December the 10th, and he was able to work out, um, you know, 10, 12 days in each period. And he came out on the other side of the chemo a pound heavier than he went in. So that's it tells you what kind of genetic person he is, and 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 you know what why he's a professional athlete. On June 22nd, so they waited, you know. Uh, um, a good period there they repeated his pet scans and he was considered cancer free june 22nd now out of respect to eric and his family and his training he didn't want to release anything until he got back on the football field so we knew that he that his pet scan and everything was good june 22nd it has been an emotional day for chief safety eric berry nearly eight months ago he was diagnosed with hodgkin's lymphoma and today for the first time he's been medically cleared to practice with his teammates Frank Bull joining us now. He's an amazing guy. Uh, just, it's just an unbelievable story all the way around. Kristen, Justin, all the people who face cancer and fight it, and they fight it head on, are very inspirational. Like our own Cynthia Newsom and Gary Lezak. And Eric Berry is no exception. Forget about the fact he plays in the NFL football. Cancer is a fight for your life. Here's Barry's timeline. After that ugly loss to the Raiders last November 20th, he had chest pain and felt fatigued. She said trainer Rick Burkholder knew Barry isn't one to complain, so he and his staff went to work. On December 8th, he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Barry went through treatment and was declared cancer free back on June 22nd. Last night, he was cleared to practice. The best thing about Barry's fight, he didn't have to face it alone. His mom and dad joined him on the podium this afternoon at Chiefs Camp, and he gave them all the credit for keeping him going when he didn't think he could go on. And there were some bad days. It was many times where I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow and not just be up, just up thinking, scared to go to sleep. And then it'll be a point where I was like, forget it. I'm going to sleep. If I don't wake up, I don't wake up. Fear nothing, attack everything. So that's, that's kind of what, how I kind of did the thing. So bottom line, Barry fought something that millions of people are fighting every day. After hearing the exciting news that Barry B. Cancer was cleared to be back on the field that he promised back in December. NFL coaches, teammates, and fans were all excited and amazed on the journey he'd been through to get back on the field. Absolutely. I mean, and as a Chiefs fan and Chiefs player, it's great to see someone that's so important to his organization be back and healthy and confident out there. You know, he got diagnosed with it. He attacked it head on. So I had no doubt that if he wanted to return, he would find a way to get it done. He did. Unbelievable. I mean, I can't. You know, I've never had that, so I can't empathize. But, you know, looking from the outside and knowing how that has devastated, you know, that disease has devastated people, uh, you know, throughout the years uh, to see a guy come back and, and get himself back out there. Just unbelievable. Uh, I mean, it was amazing, you know, just that the energy, you know, you can't, you can't make it up, you can't explain it. Um, his communication out there, um, just his confidence and swagger, I mean, that can go on, but I mean, it's understood. After being forced to sit out last season because of cancer, then returning right on time before the 2015 season started, Chiefs fans in Arrowhead Stadium gave Barry a welcome home applause on his first opening home game. What a scene here. Eric Barry taking the field. Declared cancer free just a couple of months ago. The last Chief to be introduced. And for more on this remarkable story, Eric Barry. For the game, but uh, 
I shed a few d during the game, and uh, I shed a few after. So I think I held it together pretty good. But you know, it's just a lot of a lot of emotion. So I just try to contain them and let it show through my play. Barry won the 2015 SB Comeback Player of the Year and gave a remarkable speech that encouraged people who are going through tough times. Man, first of all, I want to say thank you, and I'm truly honored, truly blessed, truly thankful to be standing here before you all. Um, I have so many people I want to thank, but I just want to thank God because it was some tough times. It was some times where I felt like I couldn't do it anymore. In times of uncertainty, I just leaned on him. And then he put my family in place. They supported me so much. My, my mom, my dad, it was a lot of rough times, a lot of rough nights, a lot of, a lot of lonely nights. But man, my mom was right there. And I love you to death. I know you're out here watching, mom. I love you. I love you, pops. I love you. I love you. I love you. When I lost my hair, Pops was right there. He shaved his head with me just so I wouldn't be by myself. And I love you to death for that. <laughs> my, un my uncle Nard, when I first started training, man, he was right there with me. Throughout all my meals, when I couldn't eat, when I was throwing up, everybody was there to rub my back, man. My I'm sorry if I'm taking some time, man, but this is, a I, I didn't, I knew I'd be here, but I, I, I feel like I'm dreaming right now. But I love y'all all, man. My homies, Savion, Jason, I love y'all, bro. Y'all was rocking with me. Y'all never doubted me. Justin Houston, you never doubted me. <sighs> from the first time, from the first time when I knew I was diagnosed, you came on my couch and told me, bro, you're going to beat it from day one. I just want the first copy of the book. <laughs> <laughs> I respect you for that, man. Coach Reed, thank you for telling me to fear nothing, attack everything. Coach Pagano, thank you for your support throughout the whole ordeal. Man, Tony Villani, Coach Lou, Coach Raw, all y'all for pushing me, man. Inky Johnson, big bro, thank you for showing me that miracles do happen. And I just love everybody. Nurse Stephanie, I appreciate it, man. End of the day, everybody just live out your dreams, man. Don't let anything come in between it. If you're unsure about anything, man, get on your knees and pray and just take it from there, man. I love y'all all. Thank you. During the 2015 season, Pittsburgh's running back James Conner was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, forcing him to miss the rest of the season after suffering a MCL injury from the first game. But I was at with the Steelers when James Conner had it, and he was at Pitt, but we share the facility, so we saw him. You know, that that kind of brought to me, you know, what uh, Eric was going through because you saw, you know, James lose his hair. You saw him still continue to work. You know, he like I said, we shared a facility. So you'd see this kid out there working. But, you know, probably very similar type guys, James Connor and Eric Berry. I mean, different players, different positions, but uh, very similar mentality and will to succeed and thrive. When Barry found out that Connor was diagnosed with cancer, he managed to get in contact with Connor and give him some encouraging words that would lift up his spirit not to give up. But what made it more special that Barry surprised Connor on the Ellen Show? Have you met him at all or no? No, I never met him. You should meet him now. Eric, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How you doing? I'm great. So, uh, how did you hear about this this uh, situation with James? Man, I actually didn't find out through the news or anything. A scout came to our meeting room and told me, pulled me out of meetings, just told me like one of the top running backs in the country. He's he just found out that he has the same cancer that you was diagnosed with. So, you know, if you could, you know, just give him a call. So, we just had a brief conversation about it, and then we finished up with meetings. That's amazing. And obviously, you inspired him and, and gave him the drive to go on. What, what uh, advice do you have uh, for anyone out there who's watching that may be going through this? Uh, just never limit yourself, you know what I'm saying? And anything that you're going through, you're really battling yourself. The same thing I told you. Mm -hmm. It's never about the chemo. It's never about the cancer. It's all about what you're willing to put in to overcome whatever the obstacle is. And I think that's the biggest thing that you're challenged with when you when you come in contact with any type of uh, trial or tribulation is just seeing how tough you are mentally to actually do what you want to do. Yeah. In 2016, he had another All-Pro season and was ranked in the top 100 player list. 
After that season, he became the highest paid safety in the league, signed a six-year deal worth $78 million. But his season with the Chiefs was cut short after two years, suffering two back-to-back season-ending injuries, playing only a total of three games in two years. Where, you know, 30 is old, you know, and so, um, you know, like I say, it, his body, uh, I don't know, I can't give you specific numbers, uh, but I know, you know, he wasn't playing 16 games in a year. Um, and so, like I said, you know, when you're having injuries and, you know, you, you got a big cap number, I mean, a lot of things go into it. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't shock me when anybody gets released in the NFL because at the end of the day, those guys are going to do what they think is best uh, for the organization. And, uh, you know, like I said, he, he, his body had been through a lot. He's been through a lot. And they just felt like it was time to move on. So, um, you know, just, that's part of the game. After a couple of days being released from the Chiefs, Barry managed to pay a visit to Dr. John Bell at the cancer patients at the University of Tennessee Medical Center. I have a lot of gratitude and thanks for Eric Barry to come and spend time with us, share with us his journey, not only for athletics, but his cancer journey, and to kind of pump some energy into our staff and our patients to show that it is possible to go through this and come out on the other side still a winner. It's definitely meaningful to come come back and visit cancer patients, not just cancer patients, but the people involved as well, because it's just so many things that go into this emotionally, physically. I know it's probably times where they're wondering like what's next or what's gonna happen and the future is just so uncertain, but because I've had those moments too, but at the same time to actually give them that little reminder, um, I think that's something special. Following that next season, after Barry was released from the Kansas City Chiefs, the Chiefs went 12-4 and won Super Bowl 54, beating the San Francisco 49ers 31-20. Barry hasn't played in the league in three years and a lot of people haven't heard from him since. Barry mentioned that he lives a private life, but he says that he has been training a lot and waiting for the opportunity to come at the right time. A lot of teams in the league has been contacting him still, but all that matters to him is waiting on that right time to get back on that field.